let's look at an important tool for understanding and analyzing population growth over time. Life tables. A life table summarizes demographic information, often the focus is on females, in a convenient format. Includes a number of variables, including age, the number alive at each time interval, survivorship from time zero to whatever time you're looking at, L sub X, mortality rate, M sub X, the probability of dying at a certain age, the probability of survival from one interval to the next, S of X, and fecundity, B sub X. Different uh, formats sometimes use different letters for different things, but these are the entities of importance. A beautiful example of a life table following a short-lived organism is that made for annual meadowgrass, Poa annua, by Richard Law. Richard Law sowed a bunch of seeds in a plot of land and counted the number of individual grass plants alive initially, 843, and then at the different age intervals he censused this population, he recorded how many survived and could figure out the different quantities. Note that the age intervals are the three months long, so age interval three means um, nine months. So survivorship at the first interval is one, everybody's alive. But by the second time, there are only 722, so 85% survive. The mortality rate is 27%. And the survival rate can be figured as how many died from one interval to the next. And fecundity is the number of seeds produced by the, the plants. So you can see that peaks in the middle and then falls off. Now the name of these plants suggests that their life is of limited length. Annual meadow grass usually lives about a year or a little more. And at the bottom the life table variables are defined. These cute little birds are pied flycatchers, shown catching a caterpillar on the left and feeding some flies to a baby in a nest box on the right. Birds can be studied over time, sometimes they're banded even, and here's a life table for this bird in years, so some individuals may live as long as eight years. From a pop initial population census of 777, one of those lived to the eighth year. After nine years, all were dead. And each column shows one of these important variables with the expectation of further life, E sub X, a new variable on the right column, much higher for the younger aged birds. Life tables were first invented by the insurance industry, I think, to figure out the probability of people of different ages and um, types of lives surviving. There are two kinds of life tables, the cohort, which are based on a group of individuals moving through time together based on data collected from a certain group born at the same time and followed throughout their lives. <laughs> Sometimes these are called horizontal life tables. And a static life table considers the survival of individuals of a known age during a single time, time interval, taking a slice of the population at that time. So these may be called vertical life tables. I think people use those two terms, vertical and horizontal, sometimes in different ways. So to be clear, cohort versus static, or one point in time. In the doll sheep that grow in high mountain places, 
their horns grow bigger as the males grow older. So they make an, an, another line for each year, I think, maybe more. So this life table was constructed by finding dead sheep, figuring out their age, and looking at the number dying during each age interval. And so from this, you can get a picture of how long these sheep live under natural circumstances. This is an example of a, not a cohort life table, but looking at a phenomenon. You can look at the distribution of individuals of a certain age at one point in time, or this could be, this. what we have here is constructed the age of death at one point in time. Let's talk about little r. The intrinsic rate of increase, sometimes also called the Malthusian parameter after Thomas Malthus. A population with a stable age distribution will increase or decrease according to this rate. And this is approximated, r sub a, by performing several computations on a life table, starting with the computation of big R sub zero, or the net reproductive rate, which is the sum of survivorship, excuse me, survival times the birth rate across all of the age classes. So this big R, the net reproductive rate, is the expected total number of offspring that an individual female would produce over the course of her lifespan. If big R equals 1, that's the replacement rate. Less than 1 is typical of a declining population, greater than 1 an increasing population. You can calculate generation time for the population as the sum of the intervals times the survival times the birth rate divided by the sum of the survivals over the birth rate. So you can approximate the Malthusian parameter using the net reproductive rate and generation time with this equation. It's equal to the natural log of the reproductive rate over the generation time. Large values of net reproductive rate and small values of generation time lead to the most rapid population growth. But not all populations grow exponentially and this is because the intrinsic rate of increase, little r, is balanced by extrinsic factors. Most populations remain relatively stable. Why is that? And this is something that was noticed by Malthus and Charles Darwin. What happens is population growth is being checked or limited by either a decrease in the birth rate, an increase in the death rate, or both. So we'll look at in the future what might be causing these limits.